There is actually another parameterization method that is incompatible with these types of parameters. So let's go ahead and select them all from here and delete them. At the top of the model tree is a little icon that will start history tracking and pop open this panel. History tracking will record your modeling steps for applications like creating from scratch, parameterizing existing models or traditional CIE prep like repair, defeaturing, beam and shell extraction for FEA or fluid extraction for CFD. If you power select all rounds of a certain size based on a seed face and fill to remove, all that logic gets captured and replayed next time through. History tracking also captures sketch parameters with the new sketch solver. If you want to add a rib for strength, you can select these two parallel faces with control and scroll for query select and turn on a sketch tool like line. You will go into a sketch plane right between those two faces. Start the line away from the corner, otherwise it will be locked or snapped to it. You can sketch these three lines in any order and then notice that two are a dark blue and one is light blue. The dark blue lines are fully constrained because they are snapped to the faces on the solid body. The light blue line is under constrained and you'll notice I can drag on it or the light blue endpoints to see in which directions they are free to move so I can better understand what constraints to add to fully constrain my sketch without over constraining it. When you enter sketch mode, the ribbon expands to show the constraint tools. There is a drop down on constraint types you can add between sketch entities and a dimension tool for adding dimension constraints, which is what you'll do. Click on the line and click again to place a dimension for the length. If you press escape or switch to the select tool, you can see that you cannot drag on the line, but it's still light blue. Notice you can drag on this end, but not this one. Confirming what still needs to be dimensioned, you can use the dimension tool to dimension the length of this line or between points and to any reference in the sketch. If you want to be able to parameterize the angle and you click these two lines, then the sketch becomes red, indicating it is over constrained. You can either undo the dimension just added or select one of the others and delete it. In some complex sketches, it may take deleting more than one constraint of any type to fix it from being over constrained. You can click on these values to change them, and when you do, it will show you the reference number for other dimensions. Next to the dimension tool, you can visualize all the constraints, and if your sketch is not updating properly, often the auto constraint tool will find and fix issues with missing constraints like tangency or coincidence. When you are done, you can click on the 3D mode button, or in most cases after a sketch, you would do a pull or blend so you can turn on one of those tools to return to the 3D mode. Let's pull this face, but first turn on pull both sides for a symmetric pull. You can either drag or type in the number you want to pull to. Since this is an assembly, the new body is a separate solid that you want to merge into the main bracket with the combine tool up in the design tab or in the hex. If you turn on the combine tool, you'll want to pick the primary body first or the main bracket, then switch from the cutter tool guide to the merge body tool guide either by clicking it or by holding control as the status message in the lower left indicates and select the rib to merge it into the main bracket body. Notice in history tracking, all these steps have been captured. Clicking on a step will expand then collapse it. The sketch step has the sketch dimensions added and an icon to go back in and edit the sketch. If you want to change a value, you can simply enter it in. It will indicate steps are at a date and you can then click the play button at the top to run through the steps with a new value. If you want to turn any of these into a parameter, simply click the parameter icon next to the value. If you click the drop down next to the another parameter, even in a previous step, you can set one parameter as the input for another and add any other arithmetic. The parameters at the bottom of history tracking are the ones that will be sent to Workbench or used in a discovery design variation study. History tracking also supports the import of parameters from a native CAD file with the associative CAD interface license configuration and native CAD software installed locally.